our weekly close here and uh, we managed to close above the channel which is great we got our close holding support on top of the area of the automatic rally the uh, the support level that we decided on uh, on the daily chart so we're holding that level or, or we're just about to close we got a few seconds left <clears throat> which is good it's looking good you know every time we dip below that level the bulls come back in we and we get a bullish move to the upside um, things are looking good what I'm looking to see is I do have this this line right here this this downwards sloping trend line marked down we do need to break the localized trend the beginning of a break is going to occur once we break this down sloping line and then we need to break out some of the highs so the uh, the area of interest that we're looking at is this area right here at 48.38 and then beyond that the down bar here at 52.961 so <clears throat> those are the targets one two three if we can break through those three areas of resistance I think we can really start leaning on the bull case that uh, you know we're ready for a continuation in this market cycle so <clears throat> excuse me impromptu uh, stream here coming up off sync well my apologies it's probably my need an upgrade this computer just can't handle what I'm throwing at it but anyways all right so um got a uh, gotta take a look at some of these uh, dexes so the dexes are doing really really well I'm actually just gonna flip over to the DeFi index here the DeFi perpetual index on FTX and just take a look at some of these gainers so uh, Wu is a decentralized exchange I guess the gainers have changed now but we had sushi we had uniswap a lot of the dexes are seeing a lot of uh, bullish price action the reason for that or the most logical narrative that we can draw as to why that is is just more users are going to be interacting with these types of protocols using these types of services as uh, regulators begin to restrict access to more centralized and more familiar um, exchanges <clears throat> excuse me got something in my throat today um, but uh, yeah so let's take a look at some of those let's take a look at sushi sushi I've been talking about for uh, well I've been I've been loading a position into sushi for I guess a few weeks now campaigning into this one it's looking really nice I'm seeing this kind of fractal formation occurring that is actually kind of comparable to Solana I'm not gonna go ahead and say it's gonna pull a Solana because it's kind of it has very different demand characteristics to it than a Solana but let's actually just take a look at what I'm talking about here you know we had this uh, you know this this long bowl shaped accumulation kind of cup and handle breakout uh, a large rally outside of the breakout and then it come down to test similar sort of structure in Solana where you had this long bull cup and handle accumulation breakout rally and then come back down to retest the lip of the the cup so um, this was uh, a fractal that Solana did uh, after its launch that basically took um, took Solana up to $100 this actually was at when Solana was at $1.50 so again you know I'm not gonna go in ahead and say that uh, sushi's ready to do 100x the demand characteristics of Solana are very very different than the demand in something like a governance token so we actually have one of the comments in the chat here uh, geo geo my uh, TNYC uh, remember saying it no point uh, saying there's no point in owning Uniswap and all those type of swap type tokens so to clarify what I was talking about is uh, in my eyes most governance tokens are overvalued because the investors don't really know what it is that they are purchasing they they liken a lot of crypto to stocks and that they're buying a portion of the company with a governance token to me <clears throat> although you are you know buying voting rights and therefore you kind of do own a slice of the protocol uh, the demand is a little bit different with a governance token so with uniswap i'm not a huge fan of owning a lot of the uniswap governance token i would much more i would much rather own sushi because sushi you can stake sushi and you can receive x sushi which gives you a yield on the fees all of the trading fees that take place on sushi swap 
uh, you get some of that yield. So there's a very different demand case for that because me, the consumer, can benefit from that and I don't need to care about you know the voting of the DAO and the direction of the DAO. So for me, a project like SushiSwap has a lot more uh, intrinsic value both to those who are interested in governance and to the end user consumer wanting to receive benefits. So it's it's much the same as like an FTT token or a BNB token, one of those centralized offerings where you receive benefits for staking their cryptocurrency on their exchange. So that's kind of uh, my thesis, that's my approach as to why I think Sushi is undervalued when compared to Uniswap. Who's to say that Uniswap doesn't kind of implement more demand characteristics to their protocol as we develop, as they see that, you know, other projects are doing these sorts of things. Maybe Sushi or uh, Uniswap does the same thing. But for me, governance tokens uh, on the whole are, are kind of overvalued um, or they're just misinterpreted as far as their intrinsic value. So just hope that uh, clarifies what uh, what I mean by that. So <clears throat> Sushi, very bullish on Sushi. And we're seeing a lot of uh, attention go towards the DEXs with uh, you know, the overregulation coming from certain countries like China. Another thing with Sushi is, uh, let's actually just take a look here. Um, it's, uh, oh great, not prepared. Uh, the show you, yeah. The show you NFT marketplace, which is trying to capture some of the uh, market share of NFT marketplaces like OpenSea and Rarible. So this is going to be implemented on Sushi. Again, all of the NFT sales, a portion of the NFT sales, you know how OpenSea takes like, you know, 1.2% or something like that. That 1.2%, a portion of those proceeds will go to X Sushi holders. So again, Uniswap doesn't have that sort of uh, characteristic in its tokenomics. Sushi is doing a lot to drive demand for users to want to buy sushi. So that's uh, that's my uh, approach to that one. But yeah, the setup's looking pretty good. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. And if sushi can do even a quarter of what Solana did, then that's going to be, that's gonna turn out to be quite a, a lovely trade. But you know, I, I have to, you know, say that nothing is financial advice, nothing is a guarantee. This market can certainly flip on us. Um, but you know, that's what we're looking at. You gotta, you gotta take risk when there's a, an opportunity. So, <clears throat> aloha kahuna. Okay, I noticed comp seems to pump at the end of every quarter. I guess we're still waiting on BTC to decide what is going on uh, for comp to do a pump again. Um, the thing is, once something is noticed in the market, it tends to stop being noticed. So if uh, if people are saying comp pumps at the end of the quarter, uh, it becomes a crowded trade and we can't really say that that's going to be the outcome, you know, moving forwards. But let's take a look at comp regardless. Compound. Compound also looking like a very similar sort of structure where we have this significant SR flip. Um, from its kind of inception days back here. A little bit weaker of a structure. Looks like it could probably come down and test somewhere around the 250. I'm just gonna go ahead and say a big round number like 250, somewhere in that range. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's definitely a possibility. I don't really like the rounding over of this price action, even though that's what we're seeing in BTC at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'd be looking for possible entries, maybe get a double bottom, something like that in this general area right here get some sort of double bottom structure um, as a possibility as well so compound uh, like i already discussed is strictly a governance token so for me i'm less interested because anytime i look at a project i ask myself at what point am i going to be required to buy this token so for compound i don't need to buy compound to use compound uh, I don't need to buy Uniswap to use Uniswap. If I want to receive benefits with SushiSwap, I need to buy Sushi to do that. So at those, that's like one of the biggest fundamental questions I ask myself as an investor uh, for you know long-term uh, price appreciation. It, there needs to be a demand coming from the consumer. <clears throat> 
What do I think of uh, one inch? Good as well on the fundamentals analysis. One inch is interesting. It's offering benefits to the end user, which is important. It's offering a discount on gas fees. Um, but, you know, it's better than Uniswap in that regard. From the fundamentals, it's better than Uniswap because there is an incentive for people to want to own the one inch token, but it is doing less in terms of rewards than Sushi. So if I was to rank those three, I think it's pretty clear Uniswap, one inch, and Sushi Swap would be how I would rank those from a fundamental standpoint. But you know, fundamentals and uh, and uh, technicals don't always line up. Let's take a look at one inch. I haven't looked at that one in a while, actually. Been too, too distracted. Too distracted with my sushi. So very similar structure to what we were just looking at with Compound. So um, this leads me to want to just look at the DeFi index. So pretty much the same thing I'm looking for Compound. You know, there's there's probably a little bit more room to the downside on this one. We're still in an accumulation. If you're bullish on this asset, when an asset is in accumulation, accumulate. But um, yeah, you know, there's definitely room for it to come back down to the bottom of the range. Let's just take a look at the DeFi perp as a whole. <laughs> okay, so DeFi is definitely looking like a market leader here at the moment. Let's take a look. Ooh, still got these old themes going around. Everybody hated that theme. Got to get rid of it. Uh, let's take a look at, um, let's do total, let's do total three, which is every coin that, uh, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, because it just, there's not a lot of appetite for uh, altcoins. So let's draw a channel here. Oops. There's not, there's a large appetite for altcoins, pardon me. And we can give that same sort of structure to the DeFi perp. Same sort of trading range. And again, I messed it up. Okay, so DeFi is still lagging in terms of the rest of the market. So that's probably coming from a lot of the bullishness on layer ones, which is fine. Let's see how it's doing with total. So it looks like it's more in line with what's going on with Bitcoin. So that they're, they're very similar, very comparable, the DeFi index versus what's going on with Bitcoin. So we don't have a clear winner just yet. Uh, both have similar structure. What I would be looking for is just a break of the trend. Uh, we have a localized downtrend at this point. So we want to break that trend both on DeFi and on total. So we just got to break that downtrend. Once we can break that, it's looking, it's looking good. So um, that's what I'm seeing as far as the comparative on those two. I'm, I'm bullish on DeFi. I think the narratives are going to become really strong in regards to DeFi. I know that there's a lot of, they're in the crosshairs. They're going to be the target of regulation, and we don't know what to expect with that. But as a result of regulation, I do feel people are going to be pushing those narratives that this is the answer. We need to get more uh, products and more development going into decentralized finance. Can't see any video, it's audio only. Strange. Video on YouTube, blank screen, no audio. This, is this on my end? Apparently a lot of people are having issues on Twitch, which is a first. Usually the issues come from YouTube. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I don't like to drive traffic to YouTube. I'd rather drive traffic to Twitch, but I guess Twitch is uh, not working. You can try and refresh. 
Okay, what do I think of Avalanche? So I think a lot of the layer ones are getting a lot of attention as, uh, you know, Ethereum gas fees are very in your face as a big problem. So any layer one right now is offering cheaper fees. So fundamentally speaking, Avalanche has a bullish case and a bullish narrative because of the fact the fees are so much cheaper. Uh, if you want the cheapest fees, uh, we still have very amazing options on Ethereum sidechains. The cheapest fees you can get are uh, on XDAI. And what's unique about XDAI is uh, its fee structure, its gas token is DAI. So, you know, if there's a ton of adoption on XDAI uh, and the gas fee needs to go up because there's a ton more users, then, uh, you know, the gas fee is the only part that goes up. It's not the gas fleet fee plus the value of the token that you're using to pay the gas goes up. It's just die. It's a stable coin. So its fees um, will relatively remain stable or the, the coin, the underlying asset that you're using to pay the gas will stay stable, even though the network will inflate and the gas fee will go up. So uh, if you want the cheapest fees and the best sidechain, it's in my opinion, from a fundamental standpoint, it's X die. Uh, can you see that in the chart? No, no, you can't. And it's because I would speculate it's just because of uh, not a lot of exchanges are carrying it. And I think some of the exchanges that were carrying it were in China and now they're probably gonna have to restrict access as well. So XDAI's done a pretty piss poor job of promoting the project and getting it available on exchanges. But from a fundamental standpoint, it's the, uh, it's the cheapest, fastest side chain available. And then there is also um, Arbitrum, Arbitrum, which is a true Ethereum layer two. A lot of these other projects are side chains uh, Arbitrum is a true layer two in the sense that every single one of the blocks on Arbitrum is validated on Ethereum. Yeah, Avalanche is certainly not the cheapest and fastest. Um, and it's not a DEX, it's a layer one contract solution. Uh, thoughts on PPay? Yeah, I don't know. Can Ren go up 7x? I don't know. Let's take a look at PPay. I actually don't know that one. It's too many coins, too many coins. And then we'll talk about uh, MLM. Actually, you know what? While I get this Plasma Finance. Okay. Plasma chain, side chain for Ethereum, I would assume. The easiest way to invest in DeFi. Portfolio man, oh, fiat on ramp and off ramp, DEX and swap, aggregator cross chain asset swap, lending and borrowing, liquidity protocol, portfolio management. On the surface, it looks good. You just have to ask yourself one question. When do I buy the token? If you only buy the token to vote on governance, there's, le there's much less of a demand for it, much less of a demand. Cool protocol, cool project, probably something worth uh, using, but not necessarily a good investment for the underlying token if at no point you were required to use the token. So make sure that you find some more information on that. But let's take a look at Enzyme, formerly Melon Finance. So again, this is another one where I'm not 100% convinced on the tokenomics of it. Let's actually pull up a chart, MLM, MLN, Melon. Looks rather illiquid, looks rather volatile, kind of hard to hold on to. Certainly one that's going to be hard to trade with the stop loss. So you're probably going to have to just hold this one spot. Uh, don't add any margin and don't have a stop loss. When you don't have a stop loss, your size needs to be reduced because the only way you can uh, control the size, uh, the only way you can control risk with something that doesn't have a stop loss is with the size amount. So you'd have to, this would be kind of a venture capital play. Just get a few of them, I guess. Um, 
But as far as the fundamentals, I'm very bullish, very bullish on this fundamentally as a protocol, as an application, as, as something that I would like to use. What this is doing is this is offering hedge funds, decentralized hedge funds. There's a lot of financial instruments that are usually reserved for, you know, large balances, accredited investors, the elite, basically, you know, hedge funds will often, you know, require that you be a, an accredited investor with a minimum deposit of a hundred to maybe a quarter million dollars for you to become a participant in the hedge fund. That's not really for the people. What projects like uh, Enzyme are doing is they are allowing any trader who wants to start a fund that can show profitability, like this would be a product that I would like to use at some point. Uh, I would like to start my own fund so I could do so in a decentralized way where uh, you know I could just launch a token and, and you can have shares or stakes in my investment fund. Uh, you invest, I invest the money for you and uh, you receive a yield over time. It's, it's, a, it's a very cool way that we are taking a lot of these financial instruments from traditional finance and giving them to the people uh, because as it stands right now, they're they're not available or they're just hard to access because the area to uh, the barrier to entry is very high so uh very cool you can look at all of these these are just traders so you know we have rhino fund you can go and click rhino fund you can take a look at their asset allocation um you know all of the different you know it looks like they're uh they're pooling a lot of tokens they have a lot of, they've got wrapped bitcoin they've got uh, a lot of different yield pools in this one this is a very yield focused trader uh providing liquidity to a lot of pools then you can look at the fees and see what the what's in it for the manager so you have a management fee of two percent if there is a performance fee uh you get 20 percent, and the crystallization period is 30 days, don't really know what they mean by some of this terminology, but um, it's very interesting because this is giving hedge funds to anybody. If you have 20 bucks and you want to invest, you can invest in a hedge fund. It's pretty cool. Uh, again, going back to the token itself though, at what point am I required to buy this? At what point do I need to buy MLN tokens? There's a lot of protocols out there where you don't need to buy them to use them. I would love to use this protocol. I'll probably get hands on with it and, and see, you know, open some stuff up and just put a couple bucks in to see what it's like to be a, a manager of a fund. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, it, that'll tell me when I buy it. And if I'm not buying it, then this token is strictly for governance. And when it's only for governance, what you're paying for is voting rights. And I feel as though a lot of governance tokens overvalue that uh, that value, that intrinsic value of a lot of tokens. So let's take a look at REN. Um, well, actually, PPE. We'll do PPE. So again, same thing with PPE. Plasma. Plasma is actually looking not bad. Plasma is actually looking not bad. So this is on the tether pair on Uniswap. It looks like we've got a uh, breakout of our accumulation channel right here. So uh, again, go back to the fundamentals because it, how the fundamentals can be helpful is to give you a time parameter and a conviction to the trade. If it's something that you see people are going to come back to consistently and be required to buy time and time again, then it might be a long term trade. It might be a, you know, a two to five year trade for you. If it's something that's driven by YouTube hype and the fundamentals are weak, but the price is going up, then it's a more short term trade and you're going to be more aggressive with your take profits and your exit strategy. So the fundamentals can help you develop a plan and a strategy around the token, uh, but understand that fundamentals can also change too. Like there's nothing that's going to stop Uniswap from introducing new incentive models into the protocol to drive demand. There's nothing to stop them from doing that. All they got to do is vote on the proposals in the DAO. So uh, pay attention to that if you're, you know, wondering how long you're holding these things. But uh, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about uh, PPE. I don't know a whole lot about Plasma Token, but it looks as though we are breaking out of the channel trying to find support. So, you know, if we could find support in this general area and hold it, I think you got a little bit of a trade here. Um, this is available on Uniswap. So if it's not available anywhere else, 
how do you mitigate risk? Well, it is available on Bittrex. Bittrex is not the most liquid, so please be careful when you're buying illiquid coins. You can blow through the order book quite quickly and uh, not, and you can have stop losses not, you know, get paid out. You can have stop losses skip. Uh, so be careful with illiquid coins on these exchanges. But um, yeah, at least with Bittrex, you can put a stop loss in place. Although with something like this, again, I would just make sure that the size is small and, and you know, handle it on a dex still not working interesting hmm. all good on youtube had to switch from twitch to youtube earlier as well interesting i i guess uh twitch is having some server issues how far can sushi go so you know this is this is not a question that i'm going to really be able to give you solid information on price predictions for the most part are bullshit you know they're they're just guesses and they're literally as good as that like my guess is just as good as your guess uh they make for great youtube videos they make for great clickbait as people you know state their prediction in the thumbnail x coin to x price uh it gets people to click but the reality is it is it has to do with the narratives it has to do with the euphoria it has to do with the structure of price it has to do with uh you know how much people are making that bought the bottom um it has to do with how many whale participants they are it has to do with the fundamentals so i can give you a range i can give you a range but it's a hell of a range right so it's almost useless it's almost useless the range um so but let's take a look let's take a look so i'll go to the logarithmic And I'll go from the top of the all-time high down to the localized bottom here. I think a realistic target for bullish price action is 50 bucks. I think 50 bucks is a no-brainer. It's a 5x from here. I think $50 is, is a very fair price. If the narrative continues and the bullishness continues, we could see it go over 100 beyond that we can see it go silly but you know the fundamentals do have to change we have to prove the profitability of some of the other other products that are available as uh as a beneficiary of holding sushi we need to see how the show you nft marketplace takes off we need to see how profitable it is to be an ex sushi holder in that environment um we have to see the adoption of the dexes but it's we could see sushi probably in excess of four or five hundred dollars now Every single price that I just said to you, there's a highly probable one and there's a very improbable one. Price action and and how these things move in markets are very irrational. You know, pre I, I don't like price predictions because I think that they're pretty impossible to do. You can you can get targets to take profits, uh, but are you able to determine where a price will stop? Not in my experience. Uh, there are certain tools and there are people that, you know, think that they can call these tops. You know, in Wyckoff, we use point and figure analysis to determine price objectives. But the point and figure analysis is also to, used to come up with a trading strategy for achievable targets. It's not for guessing the top. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it is what it is. 50 bucks to 500 bucks. How's that for a range? <laughs> There's my prediction. Where's the best place to buy sushi? That's going to be FTX Exchange, which is the best place to buy a lot of coins. Uh, its coin offerings are less than Binance, but I am a FTX fanboy. I think it's one of the most advanced centralized exchanges that we have that's very integrated with DeFi as well. Uh, if you have not signed up for an FTX account, go to the Crypto Jungle. Links below, go to thecryptojungle.com, go to our approved applications section and click on FTX, sign up for an account today. It's a very easy way to support the channel through trading fees. It costs nothing to you. You get 5% off uh, your, or you get 0.05% off all your uh, taker fees and you get zero um, maker fees. So if you're loading up the order book with your orders that are on the taker side, you get a, a discount and then you get 0% fees if you're a market maker. So links below for that. But yeah, sushi is where I buy 
uh, FTX is where I buy, or it's where I bought all my sushi. Stream smash. Smash the likes. Uh, do you have any thoughts on strong block? Seems to be a good investment for passive income, even in a bear market. So uh, everything will lose value in the bear market by a considerable margin. I would say that anything that you're buying today, the bear market will drag it down to prices that are below your entries today. Um, that's based on all the data that we have. So the yields, if we're talking stablecoin yields, sure. The thing about these markets, let's let's just take a look at uh, what it is that we're looking, what are we looking for here? Strong block. I also don't like cheesy names. <laughs> I think strong block is a cheesy name. It's like trying to make up for something. Strong, strong hands, strong hands. Uh, strong, let's see if this is strong block. I don't even know. Strongblock.io. Easily create blockchain nodes, earn rewards. Make a node, make a difference. So these nodes, uh, node creation is going to become more and more of an important thing once we do have interoperability with the other chains. Pretty much every application built on the blockchain will require its own node for it to be cheap. You know, we have a whole bunch of side chains and second layer solutions now. I think we're going to get to a point, especially when we're interoperable, meaning that the chains can communicate. Uh, we're going to get to the point where every single application has a side chain or every single application is its own layer two. So having these types of products where you can build um, where you can build nodes is important. Uh, but I think I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to log into the app. I don't I try not to log into too many things with my wallet. Yeah, so I can't really do a deep dive on this one, but uh, we can take a look at the tokenomics. Uh, trading volume is only 7 million. It's very, very low trading volume. Circulating supply, 106. So, you know, it still has a lot of the supply to be issued, but very low token, very low token supply, barely 1 million, half a, half a million um, token supply. So extremely, extremely low. I would probably just buy a couple. Just buy a couple, see what happens. Use it as a venture capital play um, and just see what happens with something like that. Uh, it's it's certainly, it does not have the liquidity for it to be a trade. You can't get in and out of this thing very easily. Uh, where is it offered? It's on Uniswap and KuCoin and Gate.io. Yeah, I don't know. At this point in time, it's a shit coin. So you need to see more adoption before we can start to pay attention to this one mm. at this point in time it's just yeah you know there's not there's no market activity in it uh you think moni monster infinity on axie clone can hit a similar no i don't um so you know axie <laughs> Axie didn't happen by accident. Axie's been around for a very long time. Axie has a very strong user base. Axie has players that were playing for pennies. Um, any of these clones, I'm not bearish on NFT gaming. I'm actually quite bullish on NFT gaming, but I feel like product uh, projects that are starting now, uh, they'll have, have a little bit of hype, but they're not gonna have the sustainability, nor are they gonna have the focus. Like when a project launches in the bear market, they're not, you know, rushing things to try and, you know, please the bulls in a bull market. They're just, here's a product, let us develop it, let, it, let us make it good, let us make it secure, uh, let us do our own side chain, you know, Ethereum's no longer working out. Um, I don't think we're going to have another Axie this cycle. I think we're going to have plenty of other opportunities in the coming cycles, but I don't think we're going to have another Axie, and that could just be my extremely biased opinion the fact that I'm very impressed with the team and the tokenomics and the structure and everything that goes along with Axie Infinity. Uh, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm bearish on new projects at this point uh, in regards to NFT gaming. I, I don't think that there's not a trade there. I just don't want to fall into that trap of comparing it to Axie Infinity because it's already starting in the wrong place. D 
DeFi click has been pumping last couple of days, only $3.5 million market cap should do well going forwards. Uh, you know, when they have small market caps, those market caps can be erased very, very quickly. So you need to be careful. Uh, DeFi click. DeFi click. Need to be very careful with this kind of stuff. It's got a one, one million token supply, or no, one billion token supply. Let's see what it's doing, max. Okay, well, it is actually coming out of a long-term accumulation. Let's take a look at it on TradingView. Click. Okay, so it's actually not a terrible structure. It's not a terrible structure. Um, I don't know enough about the protocol, but uh, there could be, a, the thing is it's tricky. It's tricky to trade this stuff. Uh, risk management is really, really important with anything that you do. You know, I'm not trading on BitThumb, I'm not trading on Bitforex, I'm not trading on who.com. Uh, so it's really only available on Uniswap on the ETH pair, which means that your size needs to be small. It's a venture capital play. You can, I mean, it's trading volume is pathetic. Uh, you got to be careful with this one. It's also got a pretty low circulating supply compared to its total supply. So there's more tokens to be minted. Be aware of that, that this uh, current token can devalue by, you know, nearly 10x. Um, there's 10 times more tokens that are in circulation. So that's a devaluation characteristic as well. Yeah, I wouldn't put a lot of money in that personally. You know, I don't like the small market cap stuff. You know, 3.5 million, it's already down to three. I don't know. No, it's not for me. Not for me. Why Sunday instead of Monday? I just liked the weekly close. I liked the weekly close on Bitcoin. I wanted to share my excitement because we. this is an important level on most time frames. So the fact that we got a weekly close here, it's looking really, really good. Uh, we will also do a stream tomorrow as well. Uh, just DeFi was popping off. DeFi was popping off. I wanted to do an extra stream. How's DeFi doing right now, actually? Woo is still up. I don't think Woo's had its close. These, these projects haven't had their close yet. Curve looking good, cream. Okay, so nothing's uh, nothing's ripping anymore since the close, but we got some nice solid closes in there. Uh, for anybody who is uh, in VIP, we will not be doing a class session after this. We're going to do the regularly regularly scheduled class um, tomorrow. Limit orders on FTX are free if you use my link. Yes, that's what that means. Anytime you place an order in the book, you are a market maker. When you place market orders and you're taking liquidity from the order book, you're a taker. So that's the difference. When you're a maker, you're placing orders in the book. And when you're doing market orders, you're taking the liquidity from the book. You're a taker. So uh, if you use my link, you do get a discount on taker fees, but you also get zero fees if you're a maker. forever young we will see you in the next one um if you deploy a node strong pays one coin per every 10 days yeah i mean it seems like you know if you're interested do a venture capital play but you know it's it's giving you strong tokens right so what are they worth um but that's the thing like go out there and experiment just don't fucking put a ton of money into stuff okay these are when you're in the micro caps it's very 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 high risk Mitigate the risk with position size. You can do all these little micro, they can grow into something. If the project's actually worth something and you're buying at $3 million market cap, you're fine. You know, some like these projects that are successful go into the billions. Limit risk, limit risk. Don't FOMO into shit coins. Don't look at, you know, you know hidden gems and put a bunch of money into them. Uh, it's, there's real-time venture capital here, but you have to be careful. You have to mitigate risk. The best way to do that is with size. 
Uh, are you staking Sushi? Currently, no. Uh, but I do have plans to. Uh, right now, the Sushi campaign, uh, the position I've campaigned into Sushi is an entry position. So there's a lot of risk with an entry position. When there's a lot of risk, you have to mitigate that risk. And how I mitigate it is with stops and, and the ability to you know, sell the position easily. I'm not gonna lock myself into a stake until the until we've experienced some markup. Once we get some markup, I'll start to stake because I do want to get some X sushi and receive some of those benefits. But as it stands with the position that I have currently, no, not staking. Have to protect that position. Good morning, Penny. Tezos, any good? So I don't know a ton about the fundamentals on Tezos. I probably should know a little bit more. Uh, I know that it's an incredibly hard coin to hold on to. Incredibly hard. It is uh, it is a whipsaw of a coin, man. It's really hard to hold on to Tezos. Uh, but, you know, we, we do have kind of this uh, ascending megaphone pattern here on the weekly. So that's a, that's a good sign of, of exiting of an accumulation so we're in the middle of the range right now we haven't broken out of anything so because we haven't broken out there's really you know there's no safe trade here um if we break out of this channel then you know we have the opportunity for markup but right now we're at resistance right so if we're at resistance we need to wait for some sort of retrace you'd be wanting to look in this kind of general area down here Ideally, you know, for somebody looking for a new position, you would like to get the support range back down at the bottom of the uh, megaphone pattern. But if we're in a bull market, that very much is probably not a real uh, expectation. So if we do kind of flip bull, we'll probably break out of the channel, begin to consolidate and then head into markup. So, you know, I don't think that there's a very good entry currently. We're underneath resistance. But if, if you are bullish on this one, on the fundamental side, uh, go do your own research, figure out why it's a long-term hold. I do think that they're doing a lot of things that are comparable to other chains. I just don't have a lot of experience on Tezos, so I can't really speak to it well. Thought I missed a day. Staking soul, now a good idea. Uh, for the most part, I don't like to stake coins that went into markup if my entry is at the peak of markup. Soul's had an incredible markup. If we actually go back to where I'm comparing Sushi to Soul, uh, so this structure I'm looking at is very similar in its uh, it, in how it's been accumulated. Here's Sushi, here's Soul. Subtle differences, but there is some comparatives that could be made. But this is Soul down at $1.50. We've seen an incredible incredible rise in Solana already. Um, so staking at a high, I would tend to avoid. I don't like staking. I don't like staking <laughs> for a lot of reasons, but staking at a, at a considerable high, I think just is not good risk management. Personally, I just feel that it's, you know, it's just not good risk management to be doing that. But, um, you know, you do you. Uh, I would love to see Sushi do this, but it's kind of unlikely that it will. Um, but yeah, you know, that's... Yeah. Are you running a node? If you're running a node and you're very long Solana, you know, you do you. It's not something that I would do, uh, especially considering we are in a localized downtrend where I could see us, you know, see Solana back down at a, around $100 as a possibility. Um, but it could also turn around here. It's just, it's higher risk. We've had a lot of markup. There's a lot of hype. Everybody knows about Solana. It's a crowded trade. Uh, we have a lot of people who bought Solana down here at $1.50 and they're rich, right? They're going to want to sell and, and, and take some profits. So uh, you have to keep in mind what the whales have access to as far as liquidity right now. So for me, it's, it's a kind of a, you know, proceed with caution type situation and, and risk mitigation would be very important on that one. Is there a limit to sushi to steak? Yeah, the max supply. <laughs> no, there's no limit. What prevents liquidity from moving off uni to sushi? Nothing. 
nothing. So if, uh, and vice versa, you know, the pools are their own pools. It's actually kind of interesting when you, when you learn about the back end of these uh, automated market makers, because it brings into light some interesting things that Solana is doing. Using the Serum DEX, Serum actually consolidates all of the liquidity. So if you're going to provide liquidity on Serum, it's available on Bonafita, it's available on, on Sol DEX, it's available anywhere that you have an automated market maker. It's piping the liquidity to all of those MMAs or yes, MMMs, AMMs. <laughs> but when you're looking on the Ethereum network, it's very fragmented. So you have the liquidity pools on Uniswap and you have the liquidity pools on SushiSwap, but there's a different incentive model and they do that with API. When the pool begins to run dry, the annual percentage yield for providing liquidity for that pool increases. That's how, uh, you know, when you're on Ethereum and, and Binance Smart Chain and stuff like that, where the pools are isolated, you'll see the, the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000% APY. It's because the pool's empty. They're trying to really incentivize providing liquidity to that pool. Um, and then there's arbitrage traders as well. So if the APY on Uniswap drops and it's higher on uh, sushi swap well now they're going to pull liquidity from here go put it in here and then you know you have an arbitrage effect where they're kind of balanced so because of the arbitrage inside of uh these dexes i think a lot of the pools especially the mainstream pools are going to be relatively equalized as opportunities present both uh platforms so you know the liquidity does change pools all the time basically uh, is what I'm saying, and it's just part of it. It's not a big deal. Sorry to keep hassling you, just want to share info with the viewers. There's also a token place, T-O-K, one exchange for every coin, no need to log into multiple exchanges could also be a good VC play. Well, I mean, you can do that on Sushi. You can get any token you want. Sushi has so many tokens and so many chains. Like you want it, it's there. Sushi swap. And Sushi's mainstream. It's got the network effect. It's got the highest likelihood of actually being able to provide this stuff. So if you want an Ethereum token, you go to the Ethereum network. If you want a Polygon token, you go to Polygon. If you want something on Avalanche, you go to Avalanche. If you want something on Moon River, you go to Moon River. There's 20, they advertise that they have 20 different blockchains um, active on sushi so you know this is already an all-in-one on top of that it's it's adding other apps as well you know adding the kashi lending this is the ave competitor and then they're going to be adding an nft marketplace and sushi is trying to be the all-in-one platform that's why i'm so bullish on sushi because it's a it's a recognized name and it's trying to do everything. It's trying to be a, a one-stop shop. It's the Walmart of DeFi. <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of bullish on it. But let's take a look at the one you were mentioning, with it, which was uh, uh, TOK. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a v, VC play for sure. TOK token place. So I don't like it when the market clap and the max supply are hidden. I really don't like that. It's, uh, it's a huge red flag for me. Some of the most nefarious projects in crypto don't display this information. You know, like if we take a look at Hex, none of that information is displayed. It's a big, big red flag for me. Uh, I've learned enough about Hex that I know why it, it isn't displayed because their, their supply is so manipulated. But um, yeah, going back to talk. Oops. Let's take a look at the application. Talkok.com. So it looks like a centralized exchange. And they offer you everything. 
I would be interested, is this a decentralized exchange or a centralized exchange? And then I would also be curious as to the liquidity available on this exchange. And then I would also be curious as to at what point do I buy the TOK token? Very important to always ask that question. When do I buy? If it's just to vote, forget it. I don't care. I don't care. I, I'm not trying to run companies. I'm not voting on proposals. I don't care. So, you know, I might trade some momentum and hype, but fundamentally, I don't care about governance tokens. That's me. Um, but uh, yeah, just ask yourself those, those types of questions. Any idea on don't KYC? Injective protocol. I don't know a ton about injective. I, I believe it's a layer one. I believe it's layer one. Uh, any idea on don't KYC? I don't know what that is. Is that a project? I mean, you don't ever need to KYC on DeFi. That's what makes it amazing and decentralized and permissionless. Uh, let's take a look at injective. And then I should probably start wrapping this up. Uh, shout out to um, Phoenix or Buzz, who's been in the, he's one of our OGs in the group. This dude got into Injective like at the ground. As soon as Injective was launched, he was in it. And that was one of his, that's definitely one of his best performers, I would imagine. Um, so shout out to you, Buzz. Shout out to you, uh, Phoenix, for um, nailing that one. He saw something in Injective that was, uh, that the market agreed with for sure. Let's take a look at the website. Don't KYC, it's a token. All right, we'll take a look in a sec. And then we gotta wrap it up. Unlimited decentralized finance markets for the future. So it's uh, it looks like it's probably a layer one. Lightning fast trades, user-friendly interface. Zero gas fees. Interesting. Interesting. I would like to know how they do that without gas fees. Uh, where does the incentive come from, from the validators, right? There needs to be a fee because you got to pay somebody. You know, you have to pay somebody because otherwise there's no incentive for the protocol to become secure. We have to pay somebody because we're paying for security. So actually, um, Buzz, if you're watching this, can you go into the DeFi channel of the Discord and uh, let us know if you found anything in regards to that, to the fundamentals as to how it is uh, zero gas fees and isn't centralized? Um, if it is centralized, hey, that's easy. You know, it's centralized. Uh, you know, Ronin on the Axie Infinity Network is centralized and it's zero gas fees. Um, but is there a, a point at which it becomes decentralized and then the fee is introduced? So if you know anything, let us in. Uh, let us in on that. And if there's anybody watching who wants some free material and some free study um, content uh, for the Wyckoff method and some of the tools that I've used to develop my trading strategy, go to thecryptojungle.com and uh, go to the approved applications section and click on Discord. That'll get you an invite into our server um, where you can come and say hi and we can talk about crypto and all that fun stuff. And if you're interested in joining VIP and getting exclusive content, uh, coin calls, you know, instructional material, we've got you know, hours and hours of on-demand video library content, then uh, you can join using the coupon code WELCOME for your first month. Uh, coupon code WELCOME gets you 50% off, 25 bucks to uh, get in on the group. And if you aren't signed up for FTX, you can also get a free month um, if you sign up with FTX using the links on the website as well. So just follow the prompts at uh, thecryptojungle.com. So yeah, uh, Injective, uh, I know that this one has been a good performer. Let's try and find uh, Don't KYC. Don't KYC. DKYC, okay. DKYC. Don't KYC, there it is. 
So again, market cap unknown, circulating supply unknown. Don't like that. I, I usually pass on that kind of stuff. It's also on the Binance shit chain. So I don't like that as well. I, I think that the Binance smart chain is one of the most impure of the blockchains as, for, as far as truth. There's a lot of scammers on this chain. I'm not saying that it, this is a scam. I'm just saying that most of the scammers exist on the Binance shit chain. Uh, KYC is not for me. I want to be financially free. So this is just not new. You know, there's there's nothing new about this. Uh, when you have a MetaMask wallet and you plug into Web3 and use any decentralized application using any DeFi protocol, there's no KYC. So I don't know what their claim to fame here is. I think they're just trying to say, hey, we do this because they're taking advantage of the fact that people don't really know um, that this is just well established technology that's very easy to use. It's on every Web3 wallet. Um, so yeah, uh, the first time on DeFi, you, you can choose to take your BUSD reflections from holding DKYC and anonymously spend them in the real world using any currency, no cross-chain conversions, no registration, no personal details, just sit back, relax, and automatically claim your card when you've accru accrued enough BUSD. So you can do that with a uh, To The Moon card as well. You know, these crypto debit cards, they are, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical of this project overall. Do your own research. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up there. So, um, yeah, thanks to everybody for joining in to this impromptu stream that we got the Sunday weekly close today. So um, we don't usually stream today, but I will be back tomorrow streaming on the regular schedule as well. So that will also be when we do the classroom sessions. So I'm going to check the discord right now and see how many people are already in the virtual classroom. Uh, if you would like to learn more about my offerings, go to the cryptojungle.com. And uh, that's about it for me. Uh, please trade safe. It is a jungle out there. Peace. We'll